This is how to 3D print basically anything. Find yourself an object. It could literally be anything, you know, within reason, right? Though keep away from transparent and shiny objects, it can be a bitch. When you have your object, all you need is a camera. And we are going to do something called photogrammetry. Yeah. Basically, using multiple images to reconstruct an existing object into a 3D model. You snap a photo every 10 degrees while you are doing a full loop around the object. Like this. So theoretically you should end up with 36 images. Do this at three different angles and you should end up with a little over 100 images. But remember it's always better to overshoot than downshoot. Two things to keep in mind. Nothing should be moving in the background and, and capture as much as possible of the object in each photo. That's pretty much it. Let's do this. Alright, so you have all the pictures, great. Now you need a software that can combine all of these, reconstruct it to a 3D model. And I will be using something called Autodesk Remakes. So go to their website and click try. You can either purchase the software or you can sign up for free as a student or an educator. When you are finished with the entire download the software procedure, go ahead and launch it. Here we are inside Autodesk Remake and I will try to go along as I normally would. I will not cover every single detail inside the software, but more cover the things I would normally do to make this work, okay? Alright, here we go. We want to create a 3D model, so we go to photos and we want to do it online. And uh, just choose the place you have the photos, I have it on local drive right now. And here we go, they just popped up. So you want to select the first image, scroll all the way down and click shift and then click the last image. That will select all the pictures and then click open. Remake will display all the images so you can have a look at them and uh, I think they look pretty nice. So as you can see down here we have 209 photos. So that's a little bit more than the 100 photos we estimated. Good job, Simon. We have 41 available and that means that we can do a maximum of 250 pictures. I don't know if this is only the free version. I think you can add more pictures if you purchase the program. If you have a very detailed statue or anything really, you want to take a lot more pictures in smaller increments to get the um, details appear in your 3D model. So that's something to keep in mind. When you are happy with all your photos, go ahead and create the model and give it a cute name. This is a limitation of the free software. If you purchase the software, you can use the ultra high uh, quality. While if you have the free software, you can only use the standard. All right, go ahead and click start. Your project will end up down here and it will do three things. It will upload the pictures, it will put you in a queue, and it will create the 3D model. And this could take 30 minutes, it could take five hours. All we can do now is wait. Two thousand years later. All right. Three hours later and it's finally ready to be downloaded and this is how it looks like when you are ready to download, simply click the small arrow and go ahead and save it and it will begin to download. This will be the first time I open it so fingers crossed that it works, let's do this. Yeah, oh wow that looks beautiful. I think we managed to uh, capture all the small details. Wow, that worked out great. 
All right, this is great. We have a beautiful looking 3D model of our statue and what we want to do now is remove as much as possible around our object. We, we just want the statue, not the foam plate it's resting on. Okay, so go to edit, slice and fill. And uh, fill or no fill is basically a solid model or just the outline of the model. And I just want the outline because I'm not gonna use any infill when I 3D print our object. So no fill. And now as you can see we have a huge circle around our object so drag, drag, click and drag all the way up to the statue till it hits it and we want to remove just enough so it doesn't have contact with the statue anymore. That's pretty much it and that's going to allow us to save as much as possible of our object instead of slicing it. And now we are left with uh, just a tiny part that we now can manually remove. There we have it. Beautiful. We are pretty much done right now. All we have to do is set the scale because our software, it doesn't know if our statue is one millimeter or a thousand millimeters tall. So let me go and get the object. All right, so. Our little angel is 135 millimeters from the tip of this wing to the tip of this wing. All we have to do is go to model settings, set scale and units, go to value and now you can go ahead and select two points and I'm just gonna go ahead and choose the very tip of this wing and the other tip of that wing. Alright, so the software uh, estimates this uh, length or distance to be 10 millimeters but I know it's 135 millimeters alright so click set and that's pretty much it we are now physically possible to 3d print this object however there is one more thing we can do and that's reducing the number of triangles to make it easier for slicing softwares like uh, Simplify 3D, Cura, Repeater Host uh, to make it easier for those slicing softwares to um, basically process our object. So let's go to Retopologize. Oh, fuck. Let's go with Retopologize and go to Decimate Mesh and now you can see the triangles that I was talking about earlier. And what we can do is drag this down to maybe like 60-70% to make it easier for our slicing softwares. So decimate all. So that's uh, that's significantly less triangles. Go to export, export model, and here you can choose what format you wish to export in. Uh, we are gonna go with ArtCam STL. It just makes it an STL file for our 3D uh, slicing software to recognize. Uh, you can choose the quality, I'm gonna go with high and click export. Someone is calling again. Hey, this email. I do get a lot of comments from you guys asking for my settings in my slicing software. So I thought I would incorporate that into this video. And I'm using Simplified 3D. Now let's import the STL file we just exported. And there you can see it's very large and that's because I'm using a different printer. I will be using the CR10 with a lot larger building volume. And here we have the beautiful angel and if we double click on the object you can see the C distance is 186 millimeters. Yeah, that seems about right. Edit process settings. Okay, so the nozzle diameter I will put as 0.5 millimeters and this is not the default with the Creality CR10, it actually includes a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, uh, but I changed it up. So in the layer uh, setting here, I can use a layer height of 0.3 millimeters, okay? So that will increase, uh, sorry, decrease the printing time, but it will increase the layer between each uh, layer. And good explanation, Simon. The extrusion multiplier I have set at 0.98, and this is general. Uh, if you go with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, I would decrease it even more. Extrusion width 0.53, yeah that's fine. Retraction 4, that's just not enough, so I will increase that to 6. Alright, let's go to the next one, layer. So the primary layer height I have set to 0.3 millimeters and and I love it because it greatly decreases the printing time 
while on the CR10 it still looks really really quite good. I should not hype it too much but it does look pretty good. I'm using the number of top solid layers almost like uh, an act of support. So instead of using supports inside the, uh, the model, uh, I'm using top solid layers to basically help the parameters to stack on top of each other. Does that make sense? So additions, I like to use a skirt or a brim uh, that is attached to the object. This just helps a lot with attachment to the, uh, to the surface that we are printing on. It basically makes it harder for the object to warp if you have that problem. Uh, but I like to use it just in general. We are using no infill, no support. The temperature, I, I, I normally don't use a heated bed, like never. Now we are using a 0.5 millimeter nozzle, so more plastic is gonna flow. So I'm gonna set it at 205 degrees Celsius. Uh, normally with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, I would bring that down all the way to 195 degrees Celsius. The fan is gonna kick in at layer number two. That's fine. Uh, G-code, uh, scripts. The speed, I will probably kick up a notch to maybe like 60 millimeters per second. And uh, that's about it. All right, let's see how long time this will take to print. All right, six hours and 30 minutes. I think that's respectable considering the size and you could probably speed things up by just using two perimeters. Uh, but hopefully this gave you somewhat of a guide what settings to use, what settings I use and uh, find a lot of success with. So let's begin printing. I printed it using this pink PLA filament and I have to say, she looks absolutely beautiful. Ooh. To make this look like this, we will need to use some of this. I have to say I am fairly impressed by the results, but first, let's recap. We found an object and used photogrammetry to convert our object to a 3D model in Autodesk Remake. We cleaned it up and used Simplify 3D to prepare our object to be 3D printed. Seven hours later, the CR10 printer had produced a duplication of our original object. We then gave it a quick paint job to give it a more realistic look. And this is the final result. It is not perfect, but I think with a little work, you could get it even better. And it is a very intriguing concept of basically printing anything. All right, I hope you did enjoy today's episode. Let me know in the comments below. Have a nice day.